We're here with Mark Normand. Yo. Great comedian, one of my absolute favorites. I think that's why women like tall guys. Just some guy looking at you from your best angle 100% of the time, <laughs> all day long. That's why you don't hook up with short guys. Just some guy like, geez, look at the triple chin on this broad. <laughs> Holy hell. Hey, hey. Check out his special, Out to Lunch, on YouTube. Mm. Very funny. So many jokes packed within it. Often profound. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I know you don't that. want to hear that, but That's I... That's the last thing you want to hear. You yeah. don't want to be profound. I don't want to be important. This is the first episode of a series where we bring on artists and we make the thing they are known for together. We peek behind the curtain into the process. Ah, yes, yeah, peek. Obviously, it'd be sick if people came on and they were like, made their magnum opus right here, but I don't... <laughs> I don't yeah. think that is what the beauty of making art is. I think it's cool that, you know, it's a process and that if this sucks which I don't think it will, but if, even if it did, I think that is awesome in itself because it just goes to show that it is a process. Well, yeah, sit up a little. Oh, there sit up. you go. Have some respect. Tucker, <laughs> Tucker is here. He's our, uh, our side guy. Tucky. Big Tuck. Nip Tuck. <laughs> I guess before we even start the process of making a bit, I kind of wanted to ask, I guess, how do you start? Like, if you wake up in the morning, you, you write every day, right? Oh, we're going right in. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I should write every day. Roy Wood Jr., great comic, he says, when I'm eating dinner, I'm writing. When I'm taking a shower, I'm writing. We call it writing, but writing is this, you know. Writing is really just thinking and uh, trying to figure it out. Like, on the way here, I thought of a bit and I tweeted it and it's doing pretty well. So half of being creative is just like forcing it out, just trying to squeeze that creative toothpaste. The other half is like, it just pops in. So comics are lazy, so they're like, I'll just wait for the, the creative faucet to turn on. But I think the good comics have the creative faucet on every now and then and slam down into a piece of paper and just make it happen. I know that some comics write on stage. Is yeah. That, is that ever... That's, that's bullshit. That's uh, laziness turned into some trying to sound genius shit. Yeah. It can happen, but if you rely on that, it's going to take you 20 years to write a special. I heard you, you say on a podcast, like, you treat it like a puzzle. And that's why sometimes... People think something's offensive that you were just like, no, I just, last time I heard a kid, I don't even want to butcher your joke, but like, you know, butcher. I haven't heard a kid. Remember how happy go lucky were as kids? Not a care in the world. Maybe run to the car. Shotgun. That was like the biggest problem in my life. Shotgun. <laughs> yeah, I never see kids doing that anymore. The only time a kid yells it out now is in a classroom. <laughs> whoa, whoa. And so that for you is just like, shotgun. How can I bring kids nowadays and shotgun? Oh, exactly. Like school shooter. Connected the word. Shotgun there, shotgun there. There's your joke. And people go, what do you support school shootings? I'm like, no, it's just a, a word that I use twice. It's That's... so weird. I, it's so silly. It's like saying, hey, you built that house on an Indian burial ground. You're like, oh, I was just trying to build a house. Yeah. I didn't know it was this special land. So I took like the uh, Rick Crom Comedy Cellar class. Ah, yeah. wow. Yeah. Quit bragging. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, yeah. <laughs> and I remember, like, he he had, like, there was different kinds of jokes and stuff. And, oh, yeah. And so do you kind of have, like, that written down somewhere, like, you know, or just, like, the... I think it's, like, a, it's fundamentals. It's like basketball. I don't think they have, uh, you know, the three-pointer, the, the dribble, the dunk, the, the behind-the-back pass. You just kind of... It's all in there. Like all intuition the, uh, or instinct. Or yeah, the, the tools are in there now. It's been so long. You, you know? kind of hammer them in. Yeah, like, like remember you used to play Street Fighter? Uh, I'm older than you, but you know, you, yeah, it was no, like I, I know the, the a, a, B, up, down, left, right, A, B, B, A, whatever it was. And then after a while, it's like, you, know, you, yeah. you, you, you used to have to like A, B, B, you know, and then after a while, you just kind of get it. Like muscle memory. Yeah. Muscle memory. Amazing. One of the styles of jokes that I really love when you do, and I noticed a lot in the special, was like, you'll take one thing and compare it. Like, how? what does it share in common with this other thing? Yes, yes. So <laughs> marriage and anal sex, you compare those. I don't know, I feel like a lot of guys look at marriage the way women look at anal. You know, we're both just like, well, we all knew this day was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it over with. I'm not sure it's even natural. Right? <laughs> yeah, marriage yeah, and anal yeah. sex, dicks and guns, how they're in common. Yeah. yeah. Because a dick and a gun are very similar. If somebody pulled out either one right now, we'd all be like, whoa, is that meant for me? Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, you notice a similarity. Then you go, that's kind of funny that this is the same as this, and we're scared of both. You whip one out in a grocery store. It's scary. Everybody's going to start screaming. And it could be a big gun, could be a little gun. And then the, I think the ending was, uh, I'm circumcised, so I'm sawed off. It's, for some reason, there's some, it hits a funny bone of like, yeah, that is like that. And when your brain makes the connection with you, they're, they're laughing. As David Tell says, it's a joke bag. Comparisons are great because 
jokes are so hard to write because you have to make them. You have to create a joke out of thin air. But the comparison is like, now I got two things to bounce off of. So at least there's two objects, gun and dick, that I can play with. Right. Playing with a dick. It's easier almost. It's almost cheating because you're like, all right, I got these two things. I don't have to just go into the world and find that magic punchline or that magic twist. I can use these two. One of your bets was... What's that Jewish dating app? I met a nice girl on that Jewish app. What's that Jewish app called? The Jewish one? Uh, what's the Jewish app? Uh, that, that, the other one, the other one. Uh, PayPal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. That's like your one-liner. Big, big hit joke. Like, why did you decide that's the joke? Why didn't you peel that onion further? You know what Ooh, I mean? Ooh, yeah, I'm not a good peeler. That's, that's you, you've, you've hit a chink or a gook in my armor there. I'm not a good... Uh, you're a great peeler. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not a great peeler. Like, you got your Gary Gullmans and mm. or Brian Regan who can just mine. Jim Gaffigan will just take ketchup and do 12 minutes on ketchup. I get my ketchup joke and I get out. But that takes me so long. And I, I feel like that PayPal thing got such a good hit. I look at my act like trail mix. Bear with me here. You got your peanut, your cashews. M&M, your uh, whatever the hell, raisin thing. Everybody wants the M&M, but you gotta spread them out, and that's an M&M. It just hits so good that I like just, and I'm out. Yeah, well, Do you like, these are my notes. Yeah, uh, that's terrifying. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. You tweeted a joke, you said it's doing well. Yeah. Define well on Twitter. For me, if it's doing well, that means I'm getting more retweets than it's been out many minutes. So if it's at 10 minutes, uh, it's been out 10 minutes and it's got 14 retweets, I'm doing good because I'm beating the minutes. Yeah. Even though the crush on Twitter, I can see like, oh, people are responding to this, there's something resonating. Yeah. So I could probably take this to the stage. So I'm yeah. actually kind of open micing. So when people are like, Nice tweet, dickless. This is not funny. I'm like, I know. I'm working it out, you idiot. I'm not using Twitter as my fucking tableau for my masterpiece. I'm using it to see if people dig it. Maybe it's an amazing joke, but the wrong people saw it in that amount of time. You know? Yeah, there is that. That has happened before. Sometimes I'll search, like, my name plus camera. And just be like, what, are the, what jokes have I written in, like, 2015? And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea, but I had, like, 11 followers and so it didn't catch on. Yeah. I'll copy-paste it, put it on my shit now, and it gets, like, 100 retweets. And I'm like, okay, so you've got to go back to old stuff. you got to go back to old notebooks. you got to go back to old sets and listen to them. you got to go back to old tweets. There's gold in there, and maybe you didn't have the skills to hone it then, and now you do. Are you organized with your, your note-taking and your... No, no, it's a, it's a fucking monstrosity here. Ugh, I can't even get it out of my pocket, it's such a it's just one shit thing. show. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> these are all joke uh, joke ideas. Probably one or two percent of this is it just working. Says, it just says Barbie. That's a new bit about Barbie. That's, that's it. This is the pink one. I've made it pink because uh, this one is my key. These are all jokes that are working. This is the new hour. Okay. And the rest of this is just shit I wrote down. These are all Corona jokes, as you can see. Corona. So there's not even, like, bullet points or, like, things to elaborate on? or. Those are the bullet points, yeah. It's... But I, I wrote the joke so I know, okay, that's the Kanye joke. That's the school means uh, schools are closed, which sucks for parents. But it's good for me because now I can drive by them again. Great, I love that one. It's a fun, it's a fun quickie, yeah. you know, and it's topical, and uh, the, the parents enjoy it. Yeah. The They're, kids don't like it. Special, how do you end up committing that to memory? Especially when you have as many jokes yeah. in that hour as you do. Well, I put out Out to Lunch in May, and that was like, I was running that hour for years, and it was getting embarrassing. I go to Denver, and they're like, we heard this hour last year. You know, we like you, but... Do something else. Yeah, we've seen this shit, which is the problem with jokes, you know. A fucking Led Zeppelin can play Stairway to Heaven in, in 2040, and everybody will cheer. You know, but this, you gotta have new shit. If I'm being honest, this is like a killer 34 minutes. I need it to be an hour. But we're building, we're building. And so how long does it take from a joke's inception, such as a tweet or just a general idea, before it's like, you usually feel that it's like, this joke is ready for... Each one is different, like, mm. I, that, that PayPal thing, I thought of that, you know, while shitting, I tried it, it killed, and it was just in. But that is so, that's like a gift from Allah. That's yeah, so yeah. rare. So uh, most of these take forever, and most of them, I mean, there's so many elements to telling jokes on stage. You gotta think of it, then you gotta write it at home, then you gotta do it on stage, it bombs, because you're frazzled, you're going, how the fuck does that go, how did I end that, how did I say it in my, in my apartment, ah, and then, then it's over and you're moved on. That part is hell, but uh, once you just do that like five times, now you've gotten over being frazzled on stage, and you can just say the joke cleanly but the joke still isn't ready now you've just gotten over the the nerve part and now you got to do the joke part and then take it back to the apartment rewrite it and then listen to it it's it's a nightmare that's why the the 
the the Gaffigan long shit is so impressive. Now, this can't be interesting to the people at home. I think this is I, sick. I, well, the purpose is to show the process of the making. All right, so. all right. You've done comedy, so you you have an inkling of interest in this. There's some guy right now loading a gun. He's so <laughs> yeah, bored. Yeah. In my eyes, like, like I I love Louis C.K. stand up, right? So one of the best of all time. Yeah, and so I'm investing in you personally with my belief system here. And that I, I think that you could easily hit that level. Mm. I think that you're almost there with like this last special in terms of, that's why I said profound. I'm like, that's a really, it's like a social commentary as much as it is funny. Oh, hey, thanks. Yeah, 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 whatever. So if you could have went back and watched a video like this where Louis talked about the process, I mean. Yeah. That's true. That I've listened to every, you know, podcast, interview, audio clip of people like Seinfeld did one and yeah. Woody Allen did one and all these other guys. So there's no blueprint for comedy. It's the hardest thing. Like there's a fucking guitar book written by the Beatles or whatever. You can pick it up and go, oh, this is an A, this is a B, this is a C. But with comedy, there's not much in the learning department, like the training of comedy. Yeah. So that kind of makes it mysterious and elusive and magical because you got to just fucking do it. But it also is, is frustrating. Yeah. Like you can't cover a, uh, another stand-up's material to practice the, right, the performance right. aspect at the very least. I guess you could if, if nobody caught you, but or yeah. if you like did a disclaimer at the mic, like, "Hey guys, I'm going to be doing somebody else's material." But yeah, <laughs> but you got to do your own because you have to learn your voice and you got to learn how you deliver your right. cadence. But yeah, no, I, I hear you. Louis C.K. has got some great shit on YouTube from, like, the 90s. Yeah. Where he's kind of struggling on stage, but the material, you can see, like, oh, this is a big idea. The audience isn't catching on. Or maybe it's not perfectly written, but, man, this is brilliant yeah. shit. Yeah. You hear his premise, and you're like, oh, he can mind that. Alone. Exactly. And that's the other thing about comedy nobody tells you, is it's a lot of organization and presentation. I don't just mean delivery and talking. I mean, figure out, oh, that, that word should go there, and I'll do this joke before that one, because it's a, it, this one revs up to that one. It's almost like homework. Hey, Ducker's uh, bored out of his mind here. I, I know. know. I know. I'm playing with the cord. I know. This, this, this uh, is the comic in me. I'm like, well, we're <laughs> bombing. And so, with that, let's write a bit. Ooh. Right? All right. So, if you're just sitting down and you're like, I need to write today. Yeah. What do you do? That's a good question. I mean, in the old days, when you're starting out, you're like, all right, all right, computer screen. What's funny about a computer screen? Because it's just in front of you. But I think after a while, you start gathering funny thoughts. And then you, you write those funny thoughts down, and you take those to the lab or your bedroom or wherever you're going to write, and then you just start going through each one. When you get sick of one of the thoughts, one of the premises, as we call it, you move on to the next one, and then maybe you go back to the other one, and then go back and back and back. And I like to walk and talk. I think pacing I brings out yeah. more uh, creativity in you. If anybody caught me in my apartment, I'd look like a fucking asshole because I'm holding a hairbrush and my boxer's going, I'll tell you Uber, huh? You know, and all this shit. And it looks so bad, but I've created a, tons of hours of stand-up doing that. I know I look like an idiot, but just keep doing it. Yeah, you know, nobody cares. Somebody's watching. Just do it. You know how you picture an audience around you? Do you do that? Uh, I, yeah, when I, when I, you know, was trying to write stand-up, I do remember trying to do that. Oh, you don't do that all the time? Well, I, for me, I've been doing more like video content. Uh, so, but I do do the pacing. The pacing definitely helps. For me. And also, like speaking out loud, whether like saying random things, and then suddenly I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, what I just said was kind of cool. yeah. That's so, that's what you write down. Yeah. So, but I feel like I want to see. Even when I was a kid, I you know I would like be I would fart and I would hear the audience go ha ha, or you make out with a girl and they go woo. Okay. I, and so it might be a disorder. That's really cool though. You're like always on stage in your mind. In, in my mind, yeah. And then you do something stupid and you're like, ah, oh, the audience saw that. Yeah. yeah. You make you trip company. on the sidewalk and you're like, no, oh, the audience is probably going, look at this idiot. That's almost like uh, schizophrenic in a way. Mm. Like Truman Show ask uh, paranoia. Maybe, almost. maybe, yeah. I'm aware that it's not there, obviously, yeah, but nah. it definitely affects me. It's okay. pretty sad. All right, so we can't... We can't. <laughs> Sorry, my parents weren't around. I had to make my own fun. I get a ton of DMs from, like, these dweebs in, you know, Cleveland going, hey, uh, how do you get over stage fright? What's the trick? And, like, everybody thinks there's a trick to this and a shortcut to that, but... I was terrified. I was terrified for the first three years. But you just, the more you do it, the more it goes away. Now I can go, nah, nah, that works. Fuck you. You suck. But before, I'd be like, ah, mommy. You know, just brain's going, ah. Yeah. You know. So now I'm at least aware when it's my fault or when they just suck. The audience can really dictate to the, the success of the joke. Oh, yeah. That's why young comics, like these open mics, are brutal. And it's hell. And you can really get not much work done because there's not a real gauge there. Do you think people fall back on that? Like, ah, oh, it's just the audience? 
Yes, yes, good call. You've got to take some responsibility. That's a big problem with comics, and I'm secretly glad so many comics have this problem because there's not that many good ones. Yeah. But everybody blame. I mean, even in our culture now, everybody's blaming everything. It's because I'm a woman. It's because I'm white. It's because I'm black. It's because I'm gay. And you're like, yeah, but you also suck. Yeah, you're gay, but you still suck at what you do. Right. You can suck and be gay, you know, but like... <laughs> Wow, that works. <laughs> Even if it is, those are the breaks. You know, like a lot of white guys are like, they're not hiring white people right now. It sucks. And they're like, yeah, it sucks. But like, you, you got to make it work. Like, the breaks are the breaks. And we can bitch about them all day. And I agree, it sucks. But like, you still got to make it work. And that's with any group. You know, like, I mean, how hard was it for black people, I'm sure, to get on stage in the 70s or 60s? They had to go to the Chitlin circuit and go all these like black rooms only and shit, which is horrible. But they, so many of them did it, and we got these great comics out of it, you know? Like Flip Wilson and Moms Mabley and Pryor and Cosby, all this shit. So, yeah, accountability. So you gotta just be brutally honest with yourself. You can't just blame everything, and you can't just make up a thing. Like, yeah, I'm 5'4", but I'm tall. You know, you can't just do that. And so, and listen to sets. Listen to sets, that'll fucking wake you up. Are they laughing or are they not laughing? You know, you always, I used to book two shows before COVID. And I'd be, people like, can I do your show? I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm like, oh, send me a tape. And the tape, I'm like, A, the material's bad. B, you're chewing out the audience for no reason for not laughing. And you don't know you're bad. That's a horrible combo. <laughs> you're bad. And, and like, this guy's like a week in. I'm like, how would you be? You wouldn't be good anyway. You're a week in. Get out there. Go do some comedy. Can somebody become funnier? Of course, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always heard all these stories about how Chris Rock sucked for years and then just got good. He just worked himself into getting good. It's like understanding that puzzle. Or yes, building yes, that muscle memory, completely. I, I think the best combo is the puzzle and like a naturally funny person. Yeah, it's good to know that you don't have to have the it factor necessarily. Yes, completely. And a lot of those guys or girls are in writers' room. Mm. You know, if you don't have the it factor, but you figured out the math, go to a writer's room. Because maybe you're not captivating an audience on stage, but you got some brilliant shit. All right. Bit writing. Oh, boy. Is this me? Yeah, you're Ooh. alone. I'm you're... leather bound. It's weird because, like, Ooh. I don't know to what extent, like, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to put you under a microscope. I'm willing to help, but I also don't want to be, like... I hear, Well, we'll try it out. We'll yeah. try it out. That's what half a joke writing is, is just trying and failing. Do, what can yeah. I do? I mean, do I, I've you had want. thoughts about maybe a joke that I haven't written yet. No, that would be great. That would be absolutely great. All right. Well, maybe we'll work it out together. Okay. Because I think if I just sit here and write, it's not really good pop. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. You, you jump in, too, there, Tuck. Yeah, please, right. Tucker. All right, yeah. Tuck. I like comparisons. Please. Okay. I was thinking recently... This just hit me today. So I haven't written this anywhere, just it says on my phone, chili pepper. So chili peppers are interesting because they're kind of going the same direction as weed. Like, they just come from the ground, both of them. So now we gotta compare, okay, we're getting there. We okay. gotta, we're, they're both natural. Some people hate it, some people love it. Some people are like, I need, a, I need my food spicy. You know, I love a pepper, and some people are like, get that shit away from me. Same with weed. Right. I don't like weed, really, uh, but all my friends get high, wake and bake, all that shit. You can eat both. And then I thought, okay, and chili peppers, when I was a kid, was just like, it was a fucking red chili pepper. That was it. Now there's like the ghost pepper and the honky pepper okay. and all this shit. There's all these crazy, you know, trans pepper or whatever the fuck. And just like weed, the sativa, indica. So now we got strains cooking. And then every time I eat it, I regret it and I'm laying on the bathroom floor crying. <laughs> yeah. So that's the ending. That would be the ending. Yeah. Okay, so you have the end. Yeah, well, maybe. We'll see if it works. And that's really what it comes down to. That's like, what it comes down I haven't tried this. I haven't see, written this out or anything. But this is an idea I've had. I'm not always the laugh out loud kind of guy. Me neither. I was even nervous for today because I'm like, I don't want him to tell something great. And I'm like, no, no, I get it. Yeah, okay. And then I was like, I don't know, do they make your eyes red peppers? Not really, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe, right? maybe. Yeah, we need some, some, some we need to bridge uh, the gap. Uh, parallels, yeah. I see. Tucker, you got anything that they they hold in common? Um, I don't know. It's like hard. There's right? a lot more like independent hot sauce kind of things going on. Too. And oh. There's like a lot of these weed startups going on. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, like, uh, hot sauce. So it's like a drug dealer, a hot yeah, sauce guy, and yeah. they always have funny names like Tubbs or <laughs> yeah. some shit. Is there a CBD version of peppers? Ooh, now we're cooking. <laughs> Is there a CBD? What would be that? Like a, a mild hot sauce? Like a green pepper. Or like 
Yeah, oh, like a bell pepper. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't have spice, but it's still a pepper. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. All right, how about this? The craziest ones are from, like, weird places. You know, like, oh. this is that Chilean shit. You yeah. Know? And, and that could be either one, you yeah. know? How about this guy? I grew up in New Orleans. Mm. There was all, I had a friend who would carry hot sauce on him. Like, he had it in his jacket. He'd be like, oh, we go out to eat. And it's almost like the weed guy who's like, you know, I gotta have my own weed on me. Mm. See, there's a lot here. I think yeah. we got something here. But here's the tragedy. We could come up with this whole elaborate thing, work on parallels for hours, write it down, have charts going, blueprints, laser pointers, and it could bomb for 10 years straight. And that's the <laughs> risk you take. Tomorrow, you're gonna be in Jersey City. Yeah, You'll I'll try, I'll try it. Yeah, I'll try it. I mean, I, it could be horrible, but, but I'll try it. And that'll be awesome. Uh, uh, equally awesome. <laughs> yeah. Equally awesome. That'll be awesome. Yeah, well, because like, if you could watch the Beatles fail, <laughs> Dude, like, that would be gold information. Well, I'm not, uh, the Beatles is a stretch, but, uh... Yeah, you go hard on yourself. Well, the Beatles, I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. That's a, you know, let's go with, you know, maybe, uh, Flavor Flav. All right, yeah, okay, <laughs> you're Flavor Flav. Yeah, I'm Flavor Flav. <laughs> and you could even, I feel like you could, like, it probably takes the romanticism out of it, but you can just, like, chart it down. Totally, like, totally. Here's this, here's this, and then you just, like... Yeah, no, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But do you, though? I mean... Or would you just go on stage with just the words chili pepper written? In Eventually I will. Tomorrow I'm going to go back to the, the lab and really try to flesh this out. I'll have something stage ready, hopefully. I can just try it at least. Yeah. You know, I have some kind of footing on where it, where it's supposed to go. I remember like I'd have like an idea for a joke or something and I'm like, wow, I could take it in a thousand different directions. Yeah. And then that's... you're like, which direction do I go with it? That's the worst because the more options you have, the harder it is to find it. That's why I like the comparison because I got two and I'm, I'm ping-ponging between the two and I'm safe. Otherwise, you're out in this fucking ocean of ideas and you're screwed without a fucking buoy. Yeah. Mmm. Peppers. Weed. <laughs> I think that was something. What, what did you say? Yeah, you yeah, had a yeah. good nugget, and you had a nugget, and I, I'm going to write weed, pepper, then line. CBD, version, CBD green, pepper. Uh, green pepper, whatever like you said. Small businesses. Kind small of businesses, upstart, yeah, upstart. So that'll be I in there. I like what you said about the, like the foreign places. That foreign this, places. This comes from Venezuela. Like right. Some guy brought it on a plane. Right. Like, you could do it with coffee and cocaine, like Colombian. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like that kind of shit. So. But there is that like final blow of like... Laying on, on the, the floor. floor. That's the that's the big tie. Where you're like, oh, that, yeah, and the, the connection is so strong. But... Right. And it's funny because you've been there. Yeah. Whether you've been that high or whether you've been that fucked up from a chili pepper, you get it. Like, I think I'm dying on weed sometimes. Uh, exactly. Like, do you really like it the first time you have it? Like, yeah. Right. Really actually enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you do it to impress a girl. You're like, I can take it. You take a big <laughs> yeah, hit yeah. or you take a big bite. <laughs> and uh, I like the idea of laying on the floor, hugging your knees, praying to God. Yeah. You know, because when you're high, you're like, please, God. And when you're, uh, when you're eating the pepper, you're like, please stop this, God, you know. So there's a, there's a lot there. I think we got so. And I like the idea of like, oh, yeah, chili pepper. It makes the audience go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love doing that to an audience where they're like, oh, shit. Especially if it's like a joke that's not laugh out loud. It's if it's clever still, like yeah. you get that applause. Sure, sure. But I like a, an audible chuckle. Applause is good too, but you want the laugh with it at least. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we just go up there and go, "Rape is bad," and they're like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. bad. "You know what's interesting about rape is it's horrible, obviously, and wrong, but it might have made you." Ah, isn't that interesting? That for some people, for some people, that, that was a, that was your your birth was a rape like that. You wouldn't be <laughs> yeah. here without rape. So it's this horrible thing. We all can agree you shouldn't do it. It's bad. It's you know evil but without it you might not exist isn't that interesting and that's fun stuff for jokes I, but the, but you'll lose a lot of people at the butt rape is bad yes but... you'll lose a lot of people in the butt but it's also kind of like gotta see where he goes with this motherfucker you know let's see him pull out of this hole which is what a rapist is <laughs> wow yeah nice it's the puzzle piece it's the puzzle piece it's not like you're genuinely sitting there like yeah right of course of course obviously but it's the, it's the fact that you could connect the dots and it's like oh wow yeah isn't that in but that's an interesting thought you're like oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah that is interesting rape made you you did that with the fat people I read a news article about obesity they said they're thinking about putting microchips in obese people's brains it shocks them every time they think about food I was like, if we have that kind of technology, I feel like we should be using that on pedophiles. <laughs> Why are we wasting that on chubs? <laughs> I don't care about your candy intake. I'm worried about your candy output. 
it's that same kind of like, oh, where's he going with it? Yeah. And I think when you dig that hole super deep and you manage to get out. Oh, everybody's on board with that. I'm on, I love that. I think they're like, they're relieved and funny. You know, I, I, that's my favorite. That bit still gets some pushback. And I'm like, I'm saying we should put shock collars on, on pedophile. Why are you mad at me? Yeah. Like, what, what, you just hearing pedophiles and like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, I saw somebody, you tweeted about Greta Thun- Thunberg, yeah. Thunberg, and they were like, oh, you can't joke about kids. I'm like, what world can you joke about I, kids? I know, right? Plus, she's inserting herself into popular culture. Yeah. But, yeah I, I commend her, obviously, but you're going to be joked about. If you're Martin Luther yeah. King, you're going to be joked about. Exactly, and I wouldn't even, I don't even remember the joke, but it wasn't like, fuck her. It was just like, she was in the joke. It was, you said, warm days in November, or something like Greta Thunberg must... Have like a bittersweet relationship, yeah. something along those lines, with a, with a hot day in the winter, yeah. Because it's oh, a beautiful day. Because you're like, man, it's beautiful out, but shit, I mean, I'm supposed to hate this, yeah. You know, <laughs> it goes against brand, so it's really a joke about that more than a kid. It's comedy is like the one place where you can say things that you shouldn't, you know. That's... And I guess that's why people attack it. Well, that was the other thing. You compared it to well, it was alcohol in general. We're kind of in like a weird word prohibition. Can't say this. Can't say that. That's why I feel like every now and then we should all go to a politically incorrect speakeasy. Just somewhere we can all go to say horrible stuff and nobody cares. You got no hate in your heart. You don't want to hurt anybody. But if you can't say it there, give us a place you can. Right? You go down some creaky stairs. You bang on a big steel door. The guy's like, what's the password? Retarded. Get in here! All right. It's like the 90s again. Because you know? offensive words, they're like alcohol. Sure, you can abuse it. Sure, you can hurt people. If you do it responsibly, it's a good time. Yeah? You know? Just don't do it at work, don't do it around kids, but go home, close the door, take the edge off. Ah, midget. Mm. <laughs> right? I don't want to say little people. That's like drinking no duels. <laughs> but that hit, like, it hit me. I was like, whoa! That oh, was really? Great. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was really good. Good, I'm glad. That joke took forever, by the way. Yeah? I mean, well, I'm playing with fire already. I'm saying midget and retard and all yeah. that, so, like... Already I'm turning people off, and if the joke's not perfect and executed just right, I lost them. Because they're like, this guy's just up there saying retard. But if you nail it, it's like shooting a fucking arrow through a tube. And yeah. It just goes perfectly through and you nail it. You have to be willing to sacrifice, humili- A, humiliating yourself, and be hated by this crowd. Yeah. So it's a bitch. But also, when you nail it, you said it hit you, and I, that's all I care about. I'm like, great, I hit some 21-year-old weirdo in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. So I'll take it. Is, is laughter and a good joke? They say it's, like, unexpected. Like, yeah. That's, is that really what makes somebody laugh? You're saying something they weren't expecting, is that usually... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's gotta be, it's gotta be unexpected, but still makes sense. Yeah. That's the key. Like, why the chicken cross the road? Yeah. To get to the other side. And you're like, oh, that's... That makes sense, but I didn't see it coming. Uh, I think there's three kinds of jokes. There's recollection, which is like nostalgia jokes that make you go, oh yeah, and you're, you know, you're like, remember back in the day when you had to blow with an Nintendo, <sighs> when the crowd's like, oh shit, I do remember that, oh man. Man, when your mom used to hit you with a stick, oh shit, you know. I'm just doing a black comic. But yeah, uh, and there's recollection, then there's misdirection, which is, you thought I was going to go this way, and I went that way. Misdirect, ha ha. Then there's erection. Which is just dirty shit and dirty stuff. So those are my three I've named that rhyme: recollection, misdirection, and erection. This is gold content for the. Ah, uh, well, this is how how nerdy I get with this shit. I've made up my own little terms. Yeah, but that's how you establish like your voice and your. Because you, I saw on Joe Rogan you were talking about how you I guess were doing Seinfeld in the beginning. Oh yeah. Big time. Seinfeld and Norm. Mm-hmm. I was somewhere in there. I felt like I was writing like Chris Rock. Chris Rock was a huge. Uh, bring the pain, bigger and blacker, big piece of chicken, Robitussin, you know, all that shit was huge. Mm-hmm. Toss salad, man. Uh, and then Seinfeld was like, oh, this is what a comic looks like and sounds like to me. He's got the suit on, you know, he's this rich guy, he's on TV. Like, that to me, that was like, that's, that's a real comedian with a job. And then Norm, to me, was just like the funniest guy on the planet. So those three were, like, and Carlin was in there too, but those those were like my big, holy shit. Carlin's interesting because I feel like he takes a very long time to get to punchlines. Yeah. Like he's almost like a preacher that's like humorous <laughs> in a right, way. Right, right. Uh, not problem, to discredit him. No, no, no. Reports. Carlin's great, but he's got a lot of shit out there. He's got 14 specials, but there's, um, there's gold in, in, in there. You just got to find it. So mm. sometimes you have to watch a whole special to get 10 minutes of gold or whatever it is. He's... He's got some of the best structure. That shit. Bill Burr's great because he's he's got the structure, but it's so well hidden. You know, he's just this bald, 
redheaded Boston guy ranting and raving, but it's hilarious because that it's all built perfectly, but you don't notice it because he's just like, folks, I'll tell you what, dude, not this and another thing, and you're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, but it's still he's still hitting all the notes. Sorry, I'm, I'm geeking out here. No, no. That's... Great misdirect. This is Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> I did an open mic. I was like 2008 in New York. I was nobody. I was green. I was a poor loser, pipsqueak bitch, and I see Gaffigan go up, and I'm like, oh my god. That's how good Gaffigan is. He would go to open mics. This guy's a fucking, you know, huge whatever. Yeah. And he had this bit, and I hope I'm not stepping on it, but it was, uh... Have you noticed every culture has their own ketchup? He's talking about ketchup. And uh, he does this whole thing, and he's like, you know, uh, Italians have marinara. Uh, uh, Mexicans have salsa. And British food is terrible. And, I, <laughs> and that's a great misdirect. And it's a rule of threes, by the way. Rule of threes is another one that I use a ton. Have you ever heard... So I took the Aaron Sorkin masterclass online. Oh, yeah? How is that? It's actually really good. Yeah, uh, those aren't bad. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, but the one thing he was saying... He's like, I'm not a comedy guy, but for whatever reason, when you're doing comedy with numbers, use an odd number. Yeah. Ooh. And I thought that was interesting. And I've noticed, just like when the punchline is a number, like it'd be like, you know... And then there's... 13,000 midgets, but like it'd be yeah. like, it has to be an odd number. 13,001. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. Have you ever heard that before? Or? I've heard, well, George Carlin always said his favorite common number is nine, because it's one syllable and it just hit nine. Yeah. Nine. It's kind of German. But yeah, that, that was uh, interesting. Like Patrice O'Neill always said that specifics are funny. Speci make it as specific as possible. Like, don't just be, he had a joke where he said, I'm an N word in a, in a Buick. Right. Which is so much funnier than N word in a car. Mm. Buick is hilarious. I don't know why, but it's funny. Buick, N word in a Buick. First of all, you got the N word, which is gold, and then you got Buick. That's comedy. That's a perfect. That's peanut butter and chocolate right there. We could go all day, but Seinfeld has a bit, and that's why I listen to so much comedy because you learn. Because again, there's no fucking rule book. There's no training. So Seinfeld's got this great joke that I think about all the time, and. This, is, this could lead to the pepper thing. He's got a joke about mad cow disease. I love this joke. He goes, mad cow disease. You heard of this? I love that we found a way to blame it on the cow. You know, <laughs> you guys are crazy. It's not us. You guys are insane. The cow's got to be thinking, and this is this is where he's makes the big bucks. Cow's got to be thinking, oh, I'm crazy. You guys are eating me. You're wearing me. You're drinking me. At night, you're sneaking up on me and pushing me over, and I'm a little off mentally. Like, come on! That's a killer! Mm -hmm. And it's clean! It kind of reminds me of the, I don't know, it just makes me think of the South Park episode where they, uh, basically it's like, everybody's up in arms about killing whales. They're like, how could it be so terrible? And like, at the end of the whole episode, the punchline is like, we brutally torture and kill cows and pigs, but we draw Ooh. the line at, at whales. Oh, like, interesting. Yeah, so it's just that sort of... Uh, That's a great point bit. Yeah. The point is so good, you're like, oh! My fat joke, which this one, talk about taking forever, this probably took a year to get right, but I had this joke where I do all these fat jokes, fat joke, whatever, and then my friend is fat in the joke, and he goes, oh, whatever, because we're kind of going back and forth, he goes, whatever, it's easy being thin, meaning like, you got an easier life. And I say, well, not really, you couldn't do it. Mm. And that kills, because it's like, it sums it all up. Like, okay, it's so easy, but you're fat as shit. Mm -hmm. So like, it's not that easy, because you gotta work at it. And that's the whole point of the joke, is like, we, we make fun of thin people, but like, we have to stay thin, we have to eat right and exercise, and, and why are we the losers? Right. You get to eat whatever you want and complain? I know this is, this is fat shaming 101, but... Uh, no, no, but it's, 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 it's finding the, the joke. It's, it's finding the joke, yeah. yeah. So that took forever, but it's so simple. That just hit me in a hotel room in, like, fucking Denver somewhere. I was like, oh, yeah. How could it be that easy? You couldn't do it. And that took so long. Sometimes you got to step out of a joke just to see it for what it is. Damn. That's comedy. You really got to sit with comedy. That's the problem. Right? He's putting a special out every 10 minutes, and that's... That's fine. You know, get the money, I guess. But, like, it's like a crock pot, you know? Like... If you let it stew for 20 minutes, yeah, it'll be tender. But if you let it stew for four days, that shit's going to be falling off the bone and melting in your mouth. Mm. And that's the key. It's like a wine, you know? If you let it sit for 10, this is a 10-year-old Beaujolais or whatever the fuck, you know? That's going to be a better wine than the 10-minute Beaujolais. Mm. But everybody wants that Beaujolais ASAP. That's why I've invited you here to show the process, to show that it's like, you know, 
maybe people will be like, this pepper joke, what? This is a joke? And then it's like, no, but it's it's gotta... It's gonna be a joke. Yeah. That's why these queefs on Twitter who give me shit, they go, this sucks, there's nothing here. You're a comedian, you do this for a living, you come goes with Nazi, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but give it time, you fat douche. It takes time. You have that joke raider. That's not uh, easy, is it? I hate the joke raider. Really? Yeah, I what, what a tweet the cunt. I know, I, I mean... Look, I hate the guy, he's a dweeb, but the joke's on him. You gotta sit there and stare at my Twitter all day or get a ping every time I tweet. Like, have at it, dickless. Do I, ever, I don't care. Do you look at his ratings? Ever? I, I have to, because he gets it in, like, within four seconds of me <laughs> sending the joke. So I'm like... Who is this? What it's is called this? Mark Norman Joke Raider. Oh he's my. got my avatar, he's got my name in there, it's crazy. There was, at a time, there was a Mark Norman Joke Raider Joke Raider. Yeah, that guy I like. <laughs> yeah, because he was like... He would, like, defend you, too. Yeah. And, like, I, I'm not mad at the guy. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. I'm just saying it's it's a little annoying because you're like, I'm trying to work out here, man. Don't just grade me off my first attempt. Yeah. You know, it's like but, being at the gym and they're like, you're you're fat. It's like, that's why I'm... That's why I'm here, fucker. I'm trying to work it out. So you tweeted, I just saw a KKK member at a Wawa. He should be at a Sheets. Great joke. Thanks. It only got 47, I think, because it involves a KKK. Uh, 8.3 is the Mark Norman Joke Raider, and Mark Norman Joke Raider Raider gave that an 8.5 rate. Well, I had a joke today that I think is a 10. Yeah. And I don't say that often. And I wonder what he gave that one. I notice he's real quiet on the killer jokes. Mm. He, he's, he's quick to pipe up on a, on a mediocre. But I, I, don't, I rarely see him. You might know the guy. I might. I might. <laughs> Could be me. Could be Tucker. Is it? It's not, I promise. Oh, jeez. Damn, any more, uh, any more chili connections, just so we, we do get some chili. of that? We've, we've, we've peeled the onion. We've peeled some chili, yeah. Yeah. Um, that but, even sounds like a drug dealer chili, or I'm chilling, is almost chilly, you chill yeah. on weed. Yeah, now I'm, I'm reaching. If you, you, you need to, to get the bad shit out, just so you can keep digging. Yeah, that's why like. I'm glad to hear you say that, because there's a batting average, and so. Yeah, yeah. If you're one in ten, well then you better be swinging, you know thousand times and totally it's, it's like looking at a cake in an oven that you, you just put the cake batter in and somebody's going this cake sucks You're like i know but you got to give it a, a day to do yeah. whatever a cake takes so for me like i've been doing the tiktok stuff right and like i've had i've run ideas by friends and they'll be like nah and then it, that thing does really well all exactly of a exactly like, ah, gotta trust my uh, my instincts trust the bit. gut and then there are jokes that will bomb many times where you're like i know there's something here and if you just keep tinkering you just find the right angle or this go that way with it go this way with it but you're close if, if it hit you as funny there's something there maybe you just can't find it mm. i almost want to like any bits you want to run by mark and see like that you've had in the past that you're just like even just, a premise like, like, i'll take a premise the premises to be premises. the most fun. The premises are fun, right? The uh, premise is the fun part because the bit is just math. Like the, the punchline is a lot of math. But you gotta find the bit first. Though. Yeah. That's why a lot of times people will fight over a bit. Like if you go, hey, I thought of this funny thing about Sapporo, and I go, yeah, this, and it, it's funny. And then I go, can I have that? And you, yeah. you, you should get it because you thought of the, the premise. Right. I wouldn't have caught with the premise or the punchline without your premise. That's interesting. So That's my a, thought. Yeah, it's really the inciting factor there. Yeah, yeah. You had to come up with this random, funny idea out of thin air. All of my bits are so stupid. Like, they're not... Like, I wrote mood cock ring. <laughs> oh, mood cock ring. Oh, that's like, a fun that's tweet. Funny because, like, how many moods would you expect to be having? In that that's scene? funny. Yeah. That's why it's funny. Yeah. Is your cock ever angry? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess it is. Oh, well, well, it's a good play on words, though. My niece, like, whenever she comes over, I, like, want to post her to Instagram and stuff. And I'm, like, commodifying this baby, like, because I'm, like, oh, look, I'm good with kids. Oh. And, like, I post her and I throw her to the side. But I couldn't really figure out. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You're using the kid for content. Yeah, yeah. essentially. If you had a baby just for the content. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, you, yeah. you and a girl were, like, we need some followers. Let's fucking raise this kid. And then yeah. we... We use the money, yeah, probably. We use the money we, we make from the content to raise the baby. Mm, and then uh, what happens if they, the content is failing? Then you gotta kill it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Kill the baby. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get a TV show because they'll do a documentary. There about it, you so go. Like, this was a cool premise. I think you'd appreciate all this. All right, all right. Uh, Facebook is like a refrigerator for parents to post their kids' stuff. So Ooh, like, it's I like, like that. The modern day refrigerator. I like that. Um, no, that's something there. Uh, the only difference is refrigerator actually had some some standards. 
you know, you put the kid's yeah. painting up there. You're not putting grandpa's quote, right. you know, or some bullshit that you did ah, Trump did this today or what whatever it is. You flip that and that's what you're putting on the fridge in your house. Aha, uh-huh. uh-huh. now we're cooking. That's Who's this kid? This Where'd is he go? Phil. He, he is, uh... Nice to meet you, John. Hey, how are you? You bring the one Jewish guy in, we got a writer. I tried to do a thing where I was like, so if you go vegan, 10 cows a year you save. Is that right? Yeah, and so I was trying to do a bit about... Yeah, like, I like this already. Yeah, this so it's good. like, if you go vegan, that means you could technically, like... I, I, that's where I don't know. It's like, I could ride a cow, it's bad for their backs, but I'm already saving nine, so what, <laughs> who cares about the one? Or, saving nine? Is, it's funny to think you have this 10 cow... You know, bank that you can. Hey, I got killed three, but I got seven. I still say <laughs> yeah, seven. You yeah, know? exactly. That's funny. See, I tried this at like Laughing Buddha and stuff, and you know, I, I see it as bombing because you know they're always being quiet and there's no joke or punchline there yet. They well, might have well, yeah, like, well, premises there, but you, you got to think of that punch. Yeah, but that's funny. Cool. That's funny. I like that. God, I already like it. John I love. Lemons, tell me he likes my song. The Beatles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What about this for a premise? I like the cow thing. Oh, thank you. I had a, an uh, observation that all my all my laziest friends drink energy drinks. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. you don't do shit all day. You're drinking a monster. Yeah. Why that's... do you need energy? Yeah. You're sitting around. You're fucking worthless. Hmm. I don't know where to go with it, but I I tweeted it and it did pretty well. But I I think there's something there. It's a it's the nugget. I think it's like, what else do they do that is hypocritical of their lifestyle? Oh uh, yeah, maybe. maybe. Drink still. It's, right, that's, right. I think that's where it comes from before, where we were like, you can have a thousand different ways to go. Exactly. And, like, figure out the. That's why it's hard. And then there's a joke where you could call them a monster, you know. Yeah, like yeah. That. They're chugging Red Bull, they're chugging Monster, they're that's chugging Rockstar. Because I love like double entendres and stuff. You had like, I think two or you had like one that was like a triple entendre. And then the double entendre. <laughs> I don't care about your candy intake. I'm worried about your candy output. <laughs> Priorities, people. Eat all the cupcakes you want. Just don't touch little Debbie. <laughs> Where? How did you get to that? Uh, when I wrote that, I danced around my apartment. Yeah. Well, Comedy Central had a show at the Comedy called This Week at the Cellar, where you'd have to read news articles. They'd send you articles, and you had to make jokes and then perform. It was like a kind of a news show kind of thing, with a joke, joke, joke. And, you know, they'd be like, Biden did this, and whatever. And one of them was the shock collar. They're making fat people wear a shock collar whenever they look at food. And I said, why don't we make a shock collar for pedophiles? And then I needed a joke. And I thought, Little Debbie is a candy, or a, whatever, a pastry, and a kid's name. Yeah. And a little kid's name. So it just clicked, and I was like, ah! And then I had to piece it all together, and it worked. The first time I did it, it was a great feeling. I love that. I guess those are like, rare. I think, and I think that's, uh, I feel like the it factor for some people is just like that magnetic connection in their brain where the, like, you obviously have it where it's like, uh... It doesn't seem like I have it because it's so few and far between. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure more people, like, some people might have it more often. Yeah. Like, uh, but I think it's like something up there connects where it's like yeah. the brain pathway is like, oh, this kind of overlaps with this. Right, right. But you gotta, you gotta have the fundamentals. You gotta do the, the work and learn how to write a joke and study jokes and listen to jokes and so i think the monster i think like right now it's like a lesser version of that little debbie thing but it's the same kind of uh same kind of idea yeah sometimes i look at other jokes i'm like how did i write that because i'm staring at this monster energy drink thing and i'm like i got nothing how did i write that little debbie one god it's tough Mm. that's comedy it's so fleeting you know what i've noticed for me is like uh there's like our friend rose kelso Actually, it's, there's two girls in my life that I know that like laugh at everything, mm. and that if I talk to them, something about the laughter just like that helps. Yeah, it right. Gets it, it gets, gets the confidence up. It gets you flowing. Yeah. yeah. And so do you find like do you do, do you do that? Like you find certain people to run it by to. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the funny people, but I have like a couple friends who are they. I have one friend who's like everything bombs. He hates everything, and mm. then it'll go kill. So I'm like, fuck you. Don't and tell him. Don't anything. tell him. Then I have another friend. Even if it's not great, he sees that there's something there, and we work it out together, and that's the key. Okay. He's you a have, comic. You have a lot of, like, obviously, because, like, now you you, you know a lot of the big guys. Do you mm-hmm. ever run it by them? Or? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, totally, totally, yeah, definitely. And do you ever feel, like, I remember when I did open mics, there was, like, one time a guy gave me a piece of paper with, like, here's some possible tags. Are you ever like, ah, I wish you knew. Of course. Every time somebody's giving me a tag that's something I didn't think of that's good, 
I, I appreciate it. I like it. I'll maybe use it, but I hate that I didn't think of it. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm the comic here. I can't even think of my own tags. God. I think part of the talent, though, is recognizing that it is good. And I guess so. To use it. Nine times out of ten, the tag is shit, and you got to go, oh, yeah. But I yeah, appreciate it. it. It means they're thinking about your joke. So any of that, even this joke raider come face is, is at least thinking about me and, and yeah. listening to me and, and working my shit out or whatever you impacted doing. the guy so much there that he go. made a twitter account and not only did he make one he's actively you're exactly. just a huge part of somebody's life right right and, it, <laughs> and it's annoying but i you know whatever i'll take it uh, so one time i did that comedy cell class like i said and so i remember what we do is every week we'd go up with like a bit we wrote and i wrote this bit that I somehow realized right before going up was like s just super like a Louis C.K. bit that I had seen. Mm. Do you ever? All the time. You're like, you All realize it was something you've heard? Yeah. And now how do you deal? Like, do you, do you ever realize it too late or? Worse is when you flesh it out and it's working and somebody's like, hey, that's a Geraldo bit. And you're like, oh, it's killing. Like, Cause it's so hard to come up with a new bit that when you get one, it's like, yeah. It's gold, it's treasure, and then you gotta give it away and just lose it. Yeah. You gotta drop it. That makes me feel better, though. It's not, like, uncommon that you... No, all the time. I mean, there's so many ideas out there. This, you know, you're we're all walking, eating breakfast, taking showers, petting a dog, fucking a lady. There's just so many common interactions that's gonna happen. So, I mean, that's why, why we like top comments on YouTube. A lot of the time, it's like, yeah. we feel what that guy said. Exactly. Top comment. Good name for a podcast. Uh, what was the other one we, before we were rolling that? Uh, Save it. Save it. Save I it. like save it. Yeah. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody had the fucking. It's called the, the law of averages. Have you heard of this? Mm. Schultz was talking about this. You go to a restaurant and you go, "What is the most popular dish?" And they go, "The pad thai." You go, "Give me that." And then your friend's like, "Why you get the pad thai at a fucking diner?" And they go, "Because the fact that it's ordered the most means enough people have eaten it, tried it, liked it." came back and ordered again and again and again and again and again your friend tells you get the pad thai so the fact that all that work has been done for you and you just now know what the best thing on the menu is yeah and that's why i don't like when people are like oh you like the beatles everybody likes the beatles like yeah everybody likes the beatles it's the like, pad thai yeah, law of averages with great fits and great music and all that stuff but sometimes it feels perfect when you see yes that. like, that's what it should have been exactly that you need a little student and it makes sense you're like that it, it's weird because sometimes it seems easy because it makes so much sense yeah Yes, like, exactly. Wow. Yeah, you're exactly. Like, they make it look easy, and nobody wants to believe it, and nobody wants to admit it. But all that greatness came from practice, 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 running it, failing it, trying it, tweaking it. Kobe was always like, I was in the fucking court before anybody left, and then he showed up. We played all day. Then they would leave, and I would stay on the court. Mm -hmm. And then everybody watches him in the game, and they go, Gee, this guy's amazing. And it's like, no, he just fucking worked the hardest. Yeah. I always think that's Idiot. interesting too. Like, there's probably like, of, of the seven billion people that exist out there. If everybody started doing stand up tomorrow, like, there's going to be some people that are like above anything we've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, of course. But just not. They don't know that they should do that. You know, like totally. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? And also, I think like the piano. Well, the piano was invented in I don't know what the fuck year 1300. Mm -hmm. It's a ballpark. Give give that a goog there, Tuck. Come on, right. come on. Yeah, come get, on. Get, get, get those fingers moving. But yeah, uh, what that it me... hasn't changed. Or... Well, no, like the, you got uh, you got Mozart, you got Beethoven, these virtuosos, savants of the 1700. Ooh, I was way off. Yeah, but there's there's like yeah, a the earlier. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know what? Beethoven's deaf, right? Yeah. But they said he could just play. He just got it, you know? And Mozart just got it. And he was like a phenom when he was 19 or whatever. What if the piano was never invented? Would they, would they just be a, a ditch digger or a bricklayer? I always think about the guitar, too. Like, these instruments. You might be the best Zabimbo player. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, or some sport. You know, the, the, these ping pong guys, these Asian guys who are 12 feet behind the table doing this shit, killing it. No ping pong. What are they doing? Are yeah. they just serving, uh, you know, chopsticks? What's going on there? Mm -hmm. Something to think about. That's why comedy's great, because it always existed. I mean, the cavemen were farting on the cavewoman, and the other caveman goes, oh, 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 oh. You know, that... The laugh. Yeah, if you want to be a professional dancer, dancing always existed. Or a builder. There was always huts, building, cooks. You always had food to make. So it's cool to be in one of those, like, basic, bottom of the line, always been there profession. That's why I like boxing. It's like, boxing. always been fighting. Always been fighting. That's why UFC is so cool, because it's boxing, kicking, pinning, holding, mm -hmm. you know, that whole, everything. I wonder, is there, like, is there a stand-up or is there a music 
that we didn't discover yet. That should be obvious. Oh, that's Some sort of art that we don't know. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you can see just with computers and shit, it's getting crazy. Yeah. Auto-tune and... Do you think, as we progress into this virtual world, like, obviously, I see that you're capitalizing by doing the vlog style. Trying. I'm trying anything. Do you think stand-up is, like, something that universally will be forever an art form? That... Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's being attacked, but I think it's only being attacked because it's so popular. Anything popular gets more eyeballs. The more eyeballs, the more hate and the more love. Yeah. So it's just part of the it's part of human nature. What do you yeah. think about a guy like Mitch Hedberg, who's all his jokes could have fit into tweets? I think he's great, only because this is more comedy nerd shit. Any one-liner guy... Stephen Wright, Mitch Hedberg, Dimitri Martin, Anthony Jeselnik, eh, Sarah Silverman in the early years, one-liner. Uh, you have to have a heavy persona. You gotta have a strong persona. Hedberg, heroin addict, long hair, red glasses. Uh, he sounds like an old jazz musician. Jeselnik, tall, good-looking guy, big blonde hair, handsome, dark as shit. Uh, Stephen Wright, monotone, balding, poofy hair, weird look, you know, crazy... Uh, still no energy you've got to have a, a hardcore persona to, to to sustain attention for an hour yeah so what was the, the the british guy was like oh oh jimmy carr jimmy carr there you go yes. <laughs> perfect you do, you do. yeah he's great too he's great he's yeah not the jimmy carr laugh either oh. it's like a, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's it yeah there it is oh, 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 oh. that's, that's gonna freak people out just hearing that laugh with no visual <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, yeah, so one-liner guy. Hedberg's great. I mean, I'm hungry for 2,000 of something when he's talking about rice. Yeah. That's killer. Nobody <laughs> thought of that. Yeah. That's so funny. And I, from that delivery system, from that vehicle, that body, it, it all works. Dangerfield, another one. So that, but why I asked the Twitter thing is like, do you think if he was around for this era, if he started now, like, would he have still brought all of those one-liners to the stage or even like, oh, I got great tweets? Yeah, I think so because he's so damn likable. Yeah. I mean, Twitter might have hurt him a little bit. Because you need that persona, though, like you said. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, this guy could go, Tuck could go up and uh, do, do Hedberg, and, it, and it'd be funny, but you need that heroin addict y, hippy, dippy, fucking, mm -hmm. you know. I can make that happen, too. Beating it. Tucker's yeah. more of like a Bo Burnham type, or. Uh... Uh, he's great. Bo Burnham's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Which is, and I think it's cool because he's. He started on YouTube, and so he yeah. kind of gets a little flack for in the stand-up world, at least. Or he did in the... You watched the interview where he was with, like, Ray Romano. And great. Like, Boy, he, yeah. he hung in there on yeah. those guys. I was impressed. Yeah. He had a great line. He was talking about this foreign comic from, I don't know, like, Iceland or something. Abstract guy. And he said his whole thing is he has a black sock. And Mark Maron goes, all right, I don't like him. And he goes, all right, it's a white sock. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so quick. quick. So yeah. I never oh, forgot yeah. that. I love that joke. But also, I mean, it just takes so much, like, ice ice in your veins to, like, have Mark Marin, you know, this big comedy guy, be like, I don't like him. And you have to just stay stay in the in the pocket and go, all right, let me think of something funny. It's a white sock. I, I mean, feel like, pretty good. I almost feel like, you know, I could never know, but I feel like in the moment when he said it, it's a black sock, I wonder if he already had that, I said it, it's maybe, a black thing. Maybe, maybe. You know? And then so it was like, it wasn't as, like the moment as much as he was like it was almost like backed up by like a pre yeah probably but we'll never know yeah and I, maybe the Marin thing helped him in a way yeah got it to deliver that way and i bet you Marin went from not liking him to being like an immediately like oh wow <laughs> like, yeah yeah, yeah. He is good. or if i know Marin, he was probably more angry that he got that other guy oh really laugh. yeah interesting yeah. you're gonna be doing a chili joke or a pepper i'll joke try tomorrow. it i'll try it uh Here's what I'm already... I, the one talent I have, I, I don't pat my ass on the jizz at all, but one talent I think I have is, you know when you throw a ball, like a basketball, and it leaves your fingers and you go, that's going to swish. Yeah. You can feel it in the midair. You're like, I know that's going to swish, and then it swishes. I have the opposite. I can tell when I'm I'm killing in my apartment. I picture all the people laughing. The audience is laughing. Chili pepper jokes. Killing it. I can tell right when it leaves my mouth on stage if it's going to bomb. I know immediately, before I even say it, I go, so I got this chili pep, this is going to bomb, and then yeah. it bombs. I always know that, but I don't know when it's going to do well, but I know when it's going to bomb. Mm. That's this weird, that's the only talent I have in comedy. I know what you mean, like, it's like the, as you can just feel the energy that you're kind of omitting from your face. Maybe. Not just that, but I think in, in, like, the rush of being on stage and the people staring at you, my brain is working so fast that I'm like... I've already done all the comedy math. Every comedy experience, every minute of comedy I've, I've, I've absorbed, 
I computed this joke and it's not gonna work. But I'll still try it. All right. So tomorrow. I'm not saying it's gonna bomb. I'm saying that's no. just a skill yeah. I have. But you won't know until you yeah. said it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's I think you 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 wish you had it a little further back. It'd be nice. Yeah. It'd be nice if I had it at the apartment. The apartment. You're optimistic. It's in the future. It could go any way. Who knows? Maybe it'll work. And you're you're clouded with all that optimism. Well, that's the nature of basketball too. You got to throw it before you can tell. Good it's point. Make it in. But all right. So tomorrow, Mark is going to try Pepper Joke in yep. Jersey City on oh, stage. Yeah. Tucker and me kind of help him, you know, make some of those connections there. Hold on, I need a. Give me, give me a little. Uh, oh, yeah. can, I, can you rip one out for me there, sloppy jalopy? So, Pepper. If you're on the subway and you're like, I need to remember this, where you put in your notes or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Natural. They're both from the ground. All right. They've both been really modified over the years. Like there was no ghost pepper when I was a yeah. kid, and there was no Maui Wowie or whatever the fuck mm. weed is. Sour diesel. Yeah, well, that's a good term. <laughs> yeah, see, it's we're all the specifics. It's the right specific. It is. Uh, is that a real weed? Yes. Yeah, oh, perfect. I wonder if this was like banned because I could see in the old days they'd be like, "Duh, chili pepper, it's evil." You know, mm-hmm. it seems like something like an old medicine doctor would would you know sprinkle on a lady's vagina when she was a whore. Yeah. <laughs> you could sneak if you sneak it into somebody's coffee, it'll ruin their day. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh, no, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like you could. It's a joke. Yeah. I could dose you with with liquid weed, or I could uh, dose you with a fucking hot pepper. We can all laugh at your reaction. While he's doing this, please check out his special out to lunch on YouTube. Super great. Follow him on Instagram. Uh, shout out to Infinite Youth for letting us film here. Um, Don't they say that's fire? That's fire. About weed. They do. That's fire. That's gas. That's heat. They say that's heat. Do they say that's heat? They say that's heat. Oh, I've heard heat. Let's go burn. Let's go burn. Let's go burn. Go burn. Yeah. Yes. Let's go burn, baby. Bell. Burn, baby, burn. Tentatively, this is called making with. So today we're making with Mark Norman. It's set in stone now, right? I mean, I filmed it. In. Making with. Right? Is it? Listen, you can. This is the chance to change it. Tell me it oh, sucks. Yeah. Making with. Right, it's because it's the name would have to change every time. What about this? From scratch, because ah, we're starting with we got nothing here. We're trying to make a cake or a joke scratch. or a joke or a song. I like from scratch, but don't use it for don't use it to be nice. No, I like it. no, no. All right, and so tomorrow you'll uh, I'll try it. Yeah, and you'll I mean, and you could you know I think you'll have to connect some of the oh, dots beforehand. Or there'll, there'll be a lot of finagling. Uh, hey, if you want to hear more jokes, go to Twitter. Listen to my podcast Tuesdays with Stories and. Praise Allah. And if you want to know like what to think of the jokes, you can look up Mark Norman Joke Raider. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we will see you tomorrow in Jersey City with Mark. He's going to try his bits. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching so far. All right. You worked on the chili pepper joke today? A little bit, yeah. I'm nervous, but I have the foundation of it. I got the the skeleton of the joke. If we're building a house, I think I got the roof and the porch. And the audience is small, they're socially distanced. To hell and back, there's one group all the way on the other side of the room that they're already looking at their phones, they don't even count. Got some people in cushy chairs, which is never a good sign. This could be a nightmare. Vegetable, often baked into a pie. A grubard is a Jew. It's hilarious. He's been on the Tonight Show, Joe Rogan's podcast, Comedy Central. I mean, he's absolutely hilarious. You're gonna love him. Please welcome to the stage, Mark Norman. Good to be here. Cool place. Pretty spooky driving in, huh? Speaking of spooky, how about this lighting? Jesus Christ. What are we at? Cub Scout camping trip, I'm telling a ghost story, and then the Scoutmaster diddled me. Uh, I got a badge. Yeah, weird times, huh? This this feels like some uh, like Westworld comedy show shit. This feels like an alternate reality. There's a moose head here, sir. You guys were the old guys in the Muppets. You know, uh, I don't know what's going on. This is fake. All right. I check the news every day, it kills me. You know, I feel bad for some guy who wakes up in a coma like today, you know, he's got to flip on the TV. He's like, oh, there's a Tyson fight. Uh, news on Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Saved by the Bell reboot. He's like, all right, I, I woke up in the mid-90s. Cool, let's, uh, let's, let's watch Jeopardy. 
Oh, I know. He died. So I didn't kill turn. him. Uh, yeah, it's got to be tough. You know, you got to wear that mask out there. I saw a Muslim woman not wearing a face covering. I was like, man, she is really going to get yelled at um, <laughs> by a couple different groups. All right. See, I thought that would do worse than the uh, Trebek thing, but apparently that one is still a sore wound. All right. Don't mean to hurt the Trebek. Big fan. I'd love to uh, kiss that little stash. Two things I'm into now is weed and spicy peppers. Yeah. Boy, those have come a long way, haven't they? They're kind of similar. They've gone like the same trajectory. Yeah, they both like started out normal, not a big deal. Now they're like genetically modified. They got all these crazy strands like fucking purple nurple and Maui Waui. And all the guys who sell it are always very eccentric. And every time I eat one, I'm laying on the floor, hugging my knees, praying to God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> New joke. That did pretty well. That was terrifying. Oh, that was brutal. They're so far away. The guy wouldn't stop making drinks and just that ch with the ch 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 Everybody's so spread out. It's the opposite of comedy. And like, I get it. It's a pandemic, but it's hard. I was throwing lobs out there. Just every joke was a message in a bottle. Like, I don't know if that's going to come back. That's a million miles away. How'd you feel about the pepper joke? Pepper joke did pretty good. Not Especially not in that, in that condition, the pepper joke did pretty good. Yeah. I got it out real shaky. It was a little rough, but uh, I think the idea is strong yeah. enough that it held together with some duct tape and gum. The punchline connected, and, and over time, we'll, we'll get laughs throughout. A good sign that it already got a couple chuckles, even in that situation. That was tough. So the, uh, the COVID, it's hurting the black people in New York. Like, black people got hit really hard, which shocks me because black people are so strong. They usually handle the illness well. I mean, look at Magic Johnson. He's still going. <laughs> Hell, he beat Kobe. <laughs> All right. Unlike him, that joke landed. <laughs> oh my God, we love Kobe. <laughs> you guys smoke dope? Yeah. Yeah. Weed is tight. Weed is tight. All right. That sounds like a like an undercover cop trying to sound cool. Oh. Oh, yeah. Weed is tight. <laughs> It's lit. Uh, I'm not a cop. Yeah. Weed's gotten crazy. It's got like, when I was a kid, it was like, you know, stems and seeds, and you got a headache, and it wasn't that good. But like, weed and chili peppers are the two things that have really blown up. They're so advanced now. Weed and chili peppers have had the same trajectory. You know, like they're both from the earth, but they've been genetically modified. There's all these crazy strains. Anytime you meet somebody who grows their own, they're always very eccentric. Anytime I eat one, I lay on the floor in the bathroom holding my knees crying. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. These guys, are you guys high? Oh, he's high. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah. yeah, I get it. You gotta get high when your dad hates that you're gay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're having fun. MarkNormanComedy.com to see me live. All my dates are on there and Twitter and Instagram and uh, Tuesdays with stories. And check out Out to Lunch. We just hit four and a half mil. Let's hit that baby to five. Once I get that thing to five, I'm going to send it to Netflix and throw a Molotov cocktail through the window. Comedy!